Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, covered in beer. Um, before we get started, if you're playing along with our game, you've got to finish your beer now. I'm just glad I didn't we get it on your tablet. We haven't even started yet, and you've got to, everybody's got to finish their beer. I'm not finishing my beer. We need a spill count for this year. <laughs> before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking coffee porter by the Real L Brewing Company in Blanco, Texas. Have we had this? Not on the I show. I don't think so. Okay. I think we might have had this personally. Okay. Though if we have, it's been a but while. But you checked. I uh, know I did. Okay, cool. We've had like seven porters on the show yeah, in yeah. four years. You're just coded. Oh, yeah. yeah. All, all because I wanted a toast. So I'll what, take the blame. What Thank are we right. talking about? Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this was actually brought to us by a listener. Um, his name is Benjamin K, because I'm not going to pronounce his last name. I'm sorry for not attempting to butcher your name. <laughs> Mr. K, isn't that a man in black? <laughs> it, is, it is a man yeah. in black. I'm just yeah. going to call him yes. Sugar B. Okay. Um, but, so, what he asked was that we kind of talk about Leonardo da Vinci and the idea of the Renaissance man. Polly um, Mathery. Polly Mathery. Yep. Yes. Um, I just wanted to say Polly Mathery really badly. Or Homo Universalis. Homo Universalis, <laughs> which is also a great name. Yes. Um, but this actually kind of ties in with a show that I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, based on the cliche, I guess you would call it, the, uh, the saying, yep. um, it's better to be a jack of all trades, or no, a jack of all trades but a master of none is better than a master of one. Um, which a lot of people have heard the first part of that and not the second. A jack of all trades, but a master of none. Yeah, and, yep. and whenever they say that, it a lot of times comes across as kind of an insult. Um, I when think you're, it is an insult. Well, it I, wasn't originally supposed to be. It yeah. Was, but but, but by, by intentionally, by, by cutting that last part off, yeah. you're changing it. Yeah. Well, and that's, what I, that's actually what I want to talk about um, because I find that idea to be interesting that this, this saying was kind of started to say, you know, it's better to have a little bit of experience with a lot of things than to only have experience um, and knowledge about one thing. Yep. Um, and I, th I think that goes, the, that goes hand in hand with the idea of the Renaissance man, Renaissance person, polymath, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and that's the question that I want to address today. Is there, um, is there an impact that this idea has had on our society? Um, I want to start um, from the perspective of Da Vinci himself, partially because that is... Um, old Leo. Yes, yes, old Leo. Good friend. Good um, friend. We but, went to high school together. I believe that. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Screw you, Mike. Um, I'm still mad at you for spilling my beer. I didn't spill your beer. I didn't touch I'm mad your at beer. you for me spilling my beer. But, um... So, because uh, Ben asked for us to kind of cover Da Vinci, and he is a great example of a sure, polymath. Sure, absolutely. <clears throat> so, um, Leonardo's early life was actually really interesting. And in learning about that, um, you get the impression that he was kind of destined to be a polymath from the very beginning. Um, so, he started out, he was um, born illegitimate. Uh, out of marriage, or out of wedlock. He was a bastard. Yep. Um, and his mom, I don't remember what her story was, but essentially she, like, was not in a place to take care of him, so his dad took him in, yeah. right? Go ahead. I, I was going to say he shouldn't feel bad. I wasn't married when I was born either. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, but anyway, and so he was a bastard child. His dad took him in. Um, but because they were in Italy at the time, in fact... Um, Da Vinci, I think a lot of people recognize that that's not a traditional last name. It basically just means of Vinci, which is the village that he was in, um, a Tuscan village. But the reason that that is his last name is because he was a bastard, he wasn't allowed to take his dad's last name. Um, and so he wasn't allowed to go to school like regular kids, again, because of this. Um, so what he ended up doing was just kind of spending a lot of time outside and he was always really fascinated with the way that things worked. Um, you know, he would 
play out in the in the pastures and the meadows, um, watching birds fly and being fascinated by that. Um, you know, playing with uh, with really anything that he could get his hands on, and loved figuring out how things work. Is is this kind of a, a, a example gone right of what you might call a I don't know feral child or a you know a, a free range child maybe yeah may, maybe yeah. maybe I don't know yeah I don't know. Uh, um, he but seemed, he seemed to have have some guidance anyway. Well, and and what's interesting, I think where he got lucky is that he seemed to have an innate curiosity and an innate drive to figure stuff out. Um, that I think is where it can go wrong when you have a, a free range kid, where if they don't if they don't have something that's kind of pushing them to learn. Um, then they have the potential to just be an idiot. And, and I mean that in just not a derogatory sense, but just a complete lack of knowledge sense. Yeah, you know? it, it, it's not derogatory. So they're stupid. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> derogatory means I'm talking bad about you. Yeah. Um, but so, so he wasn't able to go to school, but he did take in a lot of information, figured out the way a lot of things worked. Um, and then later on in his life, when it kind of comes time for him to um, have a career, the way that things were set up in, in that time was you were going to go into a guild. Um, and that was going to kind of direct your career in life. Now, it, it's amazing to me how much being born uh, out of wedlock and being an illegitimate child changes your life. Um, his dad was fairly well off. He would have, were he um, a legitimate son to his dad, um, gone into one of the top guilds and probably ended up being, um, you know, a, a banker or a nobleman of some sort, you know. Um, but instead, it was sort of his destiny to become, to join one of the lowest guilds that is basically where beggars and prostitutes were. You know, it's funny to me, kind of the shift in thinking, because at the time, it seems, from what you're saying, that if somebody went outside of their wedlock, which was what, at the time, you were thought to have supposed to have right. been doing. That was the social norm. Yeah. Gone out of wedlock and had a child, the sentiment wasn't, well, fuck him, he did the wrong thing. It's, well, fuck that kid, the kid yeah. is bad. Yeah. You know? Bad yeah. kid. What, what, well, the kid shouldn't have ever existed. What were you and thinking so, when your dad was screwing that girl? Well, and I, I think it was more along the lines of like, this is a human being that never should have existed, um, and we shouldn't invest in them, which is fucked up. Like, no well, doubt. And, and it seems, and you know, maybe I'm wrong here, but it seems with little to no consequence to the 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 person who actually took an action. I well. I don't know. I didn't he didn't have to pay that. for the kid. Have to take him to his guild. I mean, you know. I mean. But he did. I mean, he had to. Ra he raised him. I guess he probably didn't have to. Yeah, he probably didn't have to. Yeah. Could have just let him be a street urchin. Or he was whatever. less of an asshole than he had to be. Yeah. You know. Congratulations to Da Vinci's dad for not yeah. being such a dick. Role model. <laughs> um, but so because of his dad's um, well to do ness, uh, he actually. He kind of goes outside of the norms. He doesn't want his son, who um, has proven to be quite prolific at this point. Um, he's he's wonderfully artistic. Um, and so what he does is he kind of goes to a friend of his, and he shows him some of da Vinci's sketches. Um, and, and he's got not just like artistic sketches, but he's already kind of starting to sketch out, uh, machinations of, and inner workings of things and kind of like trying to build shit right in his head. Um, so he takes this stuff to a friend of his and says, you know, will you take my son on as a, as, as an apprentice? He did. Um, and this is a Veraccio. Yeah, yeah. That was his yeah, name. Yeah. I didn't really focus on names. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Veraccio was the single biggest painter in Florence at the time. So he's yeah. he's he's going into his uh, his bodega, the, uh, the 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 studio that he has there, mm -hmm. and he worked underneath him. There's a there's a bunch of uh, paintings by by Veraccio that are credited to Veraccio that if you see them, you can clearly see you see that, a difference that in it's, the... it's Da Vinci that did a lot of it. Yeah, uh, 
that was something that was very common in that time period was artists would have have, have uh, groups of artists that worked underneath them and they would make the you know they would have the big goal and they do the finishing work but a lot of the individual sketch work and stuff was done by other artists oh yeah yeah um but yeah so the guy takes them in and essentially they're working um, they're working for I don't know if if our listeners have this in their local areas, but I've seen this in a lot of towns. Um, there's a an organization called Keep the City Name Beautiful, and it's kind of geared around um, keeping trash up off the streets, keeping things clean and tidy, so that you know when when tourists come in, it makes businesses want to come in, um, and that's almost kind of what this organization that Verucci, Verachi? Veraccio. Veraccio. Like I said, did not focus on names. Um, uh, was kind of heading up here. So what they were supposed to do is um, create paintings and murals and things like that um, to beautify Tuscany and the, the villages within it. Um, and, and so uh, Da Vinci is, uh, you know, he's working under this guy and he is um, sorry, distracting me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's working on the, under this guy. This guy's like, oh my god, Da Vinci is amazing. Starts kind of giving him more work and giving him more work. And then um, after a little while, Florence and Naples, a couple of the bigwig families there, are like about to get into a fight, and, and um, they're starting to think that like there's going to be a war. Yeah. So this organization, uh, Veraccio is like, all right, guys, um, we can't be focusing on art anymore. We've got a war brewing, in, uh, you know, in our little area here. We got to start preparing. And so they shift from um, works of art and start going more into engineering and stuff like that. And so they're they're working on defenses. They're working on weapons. Um, and then the war that they expect to happen, uh, Benici, Benici, maybe? Ben- Botticelli. Botticelli, that's what it is. Thank you, Mike. I really appreciate this. Yeah, yeah, I got your back. I got your back. <laughs> so um, Botticelli uh, goes and negotiates a peace treaty, and the war doesn't happen. Um, but at this point, da Vinci's kind of bored. And this is something you see with basically every polymath is they'll they'll get in they'll work really intensely on something for a while they'll make contributions to whatever uh field it is that they're working in and then they'll go you know what i think that's enough for me uh i'm now interested in something else um and so what da vinci found himself to be interested in at this point is um kind of building war machines yeah, uh, um, incredible, incredible plan. He, he didn't seem real interested in building them. He mm. seemed real interested designing in designing them. them. Yeah, to be uh, fair. Yeah. Going, hey, this will work. Okay, let's yeah. go to the next one. All right, uh, peasants, put this together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Well, he was engineering. He was figuring out what would work there, and then uh, giving it to the builders to build. There's actually yeah. a Da Vinci Museum where they have built uh, several of these, these yeah. from his plans, and, and they work. Yeah. Uh, you know, he built a, 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 a primitive version of a scuba tank with a, a it, it was a bell that you mm-hmm. put over your head and drop you in the water. Uh, and this, he, 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 or he didn't build it, he designed it. And the thought he had was that you'd, you'd pump air into mm-hmm. this and this bell would hold the air and the pressure would keep the water out so you could just walk. Mm-hmm. And you now he didn't always have great ideas. It was it, it, it was amazing his concept, but uh, the, this was actually done for the uh, uh, Doge of Venice. Mm-hmm. And the thought was that that Venice could have like armies of underwater soldiers to defend Venice from its its enemies. Yeah. Um, he he came up with the idea of the double hull ship. So if it if, if one hull gets uh, uh, punctured, that the ship will continue to, to float. Yeah. Uh, primitive flying machines. Mm-hmm. This guy was incredible with the, oh, yeah. his designs. Yeah. Um, so we've seen he's kind of gotten bored with with art, um, but he is still taking commissions, and and you see another um, cornerstone for the polymath's uh, nature, and it's that he's taking on the these works. But he gets way bored with them, and 
isn't finishing the things that he has committed to doing ends up getting sued several times because of this because people have paid him to do some work and he started doing it and was like this isn't engaging me this isn't satisfying my need to gain more knowledge and more experience and kind of bails on it which again you look at at a lot of polymaths and you see this over time there's um there doesn't seem to be a huge connection for them with i've made this commitment i've got to fulfill it there's this burning drive that seems to supersede everything else that if they're not learning they're not living kind of thing um so it actually kind of destroys his reputation. He ends up having to move around some. Um, and, and that is when you start to see him actually um, going and, and built or designing more of these, these war machines. And that's where he starts to, to focus his efforts there. Um, to be honest, is there anything else on Da Vinci's life that you want to focus on before we get into this discussion? Because I think what we've been able to see here is... There, there, there's something interesting about his character and, and that we see in a lot of these uh, incredibly intelligent men is a degree of... Um, I don't know what the word is for it, uh, but he's always nervous that somebody is uh, spying on him or getting his information. Yeah. Uh, so much that he developed a backwards script that he oh, would, I would write yeah. his notes in. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, it, it, it may be apocryphal, but the story is that that he could write two different things with both, with one with each hand mm-hmm. and write them backwards. Yeah. Uh, now, I don't know if it's true or not, but that's the story. We know that when, when we finally broke the code, Da Vinci's code, before that, that Dan yeah. Brown book, nothing to do the with famous the book. Dan, the famous Da Vinci code from years before that uh, was that he had all, these journals, they couldn't break the code, and they finally figured out that it was written, and you had to put a mirror on it, it's primitive Italian written backwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's that's pretty incredible if you think about it. It's not oh, something yeah. that we expect. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he definitely had this this idea that um, that somebody was following him, trying to, I guess, basically just profit off of what he was doing. Yeah. You know, um, which makes sense. I mean, uh, it happens a lot. Um, so you know, it, it's weird. There, there, maybe the, I'm not seeing it, or there's something else. But I'm thinking, if I saw just something written backwards, I would immediately recognize it was just something written backwards. Well, well it again, was, it's in script too, which makes it a little different. Uh, yeah, just reading Leonardo's uh, script was difficult enough. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it's something. Quite so you a bit have different. somebody with bad handwriting, writing in cursive and backwards and not in the language you're familiar with and you also don't have a standardization a standardization of letters yeah and in an offshoot of a language so uh, there was more than just the fact it wasn't like he was writing in print english and flipped it backwards because i would i feel like i would recognize that too i've recognized backwards writing before but it was something it, it there was there were more elements to it than that fair enough fair enough um but so taking kind of that image of, of what we see um, in a polymath, and we have, we have Aristotle, um, who was a physician of sorts um, of the time, and he was a philosopher, and he was a teacher, and he, he was a number of things. We have um, Invented Fermi. zoology. Yeah. Uh, we have Fermi. First name? Uh, Fermi Paradox. Uh, Bill. Bill. Bill Fermi. Bill. Yes, Bill Fermi. <laughs> Bill, yes, Bill Fermi. No, I, I'm, no. I'm going blind. either Bill or Ted. I can't remember. Oh, shut up. So we have Fermi, um, who was very, Enrico. Enrico. There we go. Who was very Ricky, much a, uh, a polymath. I wish like hell I could. And I looked for the book, and I've looked for it several times since I read it years and years ago. But... um. I think the guy's name was Thomas Young, who um, was one of the least known polymaths ever. That's the son of Thomas Old, isn't it? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this guy was, as best as I can tell, kind of one of the, the truest polymaths in my own opinion. Um, and I, I hope Thomas Young is right. It might be Andrew Young. 
something like that. Oh, Andrew Young was the former mayor of Atlanta and the HUD secretary under Clinton. Oh, <laughs> sounds okay. like a polymath to me. <laughs> Hold on. That doesn't have to be the only Andrew Young in the world. No, it's just that he made a there's, law. There's one. He made a law. Yeah. He's the only Andrew Young. <laughs> um, but so this guy made contributions to mathematics, to engineering, to chemistry, to physics, to so many. Uh, a British physicist? Astronomy. Maybe that that might Thomas be Thomas Young. I think so. Anyway, but um, there were so many ways that he contributed to different fields. But he got bored before he ever made the big breakthrough, so he was never attributed with any major finding in any of the fields that he studied in. But there were tons of people who did make those breakthroughs who were like, yeah, well, so we were, we were at this kind of place where we were stuck and we couldn't figure out where to go from there. This guy, this guy comes in, figures a couple of things out. And I realized once he figured those out, that this was where it was going. And those breakthroughs came. So he was kind of like a female of the time. What? Oh, you got to sleep with her, man. That's a bad mistake. <laughs> no, I'm just he saying. He doesn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, he, he never got, got attributed for any of his co- contributions. It came and made the breakthrough, and then somebody else wrote the paper. It's kind of like a female time. I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe I will comment on that. <laughs> maybe I'll just turn this into a rant on, on fucking the patriarchy, huh? Sounds How do you like, like that? Sounds like Mike? six-pack philosophy. Uh, Fuck off, John. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, go ahead. But anyway. Um, and so, you know, all of that to say, you know, we have a lot of examples of polymaths over, over the last couple, few centuries and whatever. Um, but I want to take a look at the saying, the beer. The beer, yes. That's Let's great. Let's look at the beer. Let's take a, <laughs> take a hard look at this coffee stout here. All right, uh, so we are drinking. It looks, it's the color that I like my coffee to be. Yeah, we, yeah. we are drinking coffee porter by Real Ale. I had earlier the ABV. I think it was like five points. It's just something. enough. It's just enough. Yeah, just enough. enough. Yeah, uh, it's not. It's not a lot, but it's just enough. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't have it up anymore. Anyway, it, it was it was not high. It was like yeah. five or something like that. You'll see it on screen if you're watching. Which YouTube. is good. Anyway, who wants to begin? Mike. All right. Uh, I kind of like this beer. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it's by any stretch the best of the coffee stouts. Uh, no. There, there are a lot better. Uh, uh, it, it's got a, a little bit of a coffee undertone to it, but it's in the back. It's not something that's in your face. Uh, I don't think that that hurts. It's it in much. the smell. It is in the and smell I and, that. And, and the appearance. Uh, but you don't have that that bitter coffee in the in the drink. Um, I'm in a weird place because this is a beer that I, I, this is kind of where I've been hanging out lately, and this is the beer I drink when I'm up here a lot because it's it's easy to drink, it's uh, it's smooth, I think it's got a good flavor to it, uh, and I can drink nine of them and, I'm, and, and, and not feel too terrible, but uh, I don't think it meets the benchmark of what uh, of, of what it, it should be. Um, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go two, uh, two, two. Yeah, so I'm, I'm in a really weird place. If I was just rating this as a beer among all beers, <clears throat> it might hit three. <clears throat> if I'm rating this as a porter, it's going to get above a two, you know, maybe a two eight or something like that. But then I have to ask myself, is coffee porter its own class? And if coffee porter is kind of its own thing, yeah. it's a below average coffee porter, right? Um, and and it's, 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 it's getting those high ratings because it's not a really easy class, at least for me. Like, it, you're starting with, with something I like. Start with something I don't like and impress me, and then you'll get a really good rating. Um, so I'm uh, echoing a lot of what you said. I taste coffee. Uh, the bitter is a little bit more than what it should be. Um, it, it hits you and, and dissipates really quickly. Um, it, it's, it doesn't have anything extra that makes it distinct from any other coffee porter. So then, you know, what's the number? Uh, I, I think I hit another 2.5. You know, I, I almost yeah. didn't want to rate it 2.5 because I just rated the last one 2.5. But I, yeah. You're rating think, this as a benchmark? Yeah. And I, and, and okay. I, I think it's a benchmark beer. And it's a below benchmark coffee porter. Yeah, yeah I agree. It's an I above agree. benchmark porter. I agree. I agree. And that, and that yeah. was my issue. That was my whole yeah. issue. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's... It's got almost as much body as I feel like a porter should have. Um, it's a little shy on the coffee flavor 
for me. Mm -hmm. Um, now I like a super coffee beer. Um, I kind of enjoyed one of the coffee porters we had that wasn't coffee enough where I just kind of poured my coffee in there. Not a lot, but I poured a little coffee in there and that was actually kind of good. Um, so I, I like a super coffee coffee porter. Um, though I get why they would have put this kind of amount in there. I think this is probably best for a lot of people. Um, good grain profile, good mouthfeel, good taste. Um, not a lot of hops. Almost n- almost non-existent. You know, I think it's really hard to tell because the bitters of the coffee are going yeah. to, you know, it, it's going to kind of like taint the waters there. Yeah. Um, but there's not a lot of hop smell to it. There's not a lot of hop taste to it, which there shouldn't be. Right. There shouldn't be for a porter. Um, but, ooh, sorry for that. I don't know why we're popping lately. Yeah, yeah anyway. I, don't, I don't know either. Sorry. Um, it's good. I enjoy it. But I think you guys are right that it's it's not quite there. I am going to be rating it as a coffee porter because coffee porters seem to be... Um, it's they, a growing field. There seem to be enough that I think we can rate them together. Okay. And um, there are enough other types of porters um, that I think that we can kind of, we can break those out as their Fair own. enough. So with that, um, I'm going to give it a 2.3. Okay. Uh, so a little bit higher than you, Mike. But um, I think it's got room for improvement. I, I want kind of that, that smooth richness it's it's a little poor this, this poor yeah, is a little yeah. poor it could stand to be a little a little middle class yeah. yeah 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 lower middle class that's what this porter is so oh fuck date lawnmower um will this get you laid i'd fuck you you would fuck somebody giving you rolling rock Sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes. And that's kind of where I am with this. It's there's like, enough of it. <laughs> you know, I mean, how long has it been since I've had a porter? Let me ask you this. Let, let's <laughs> do this scientifically. Have you fucked people giving you Rolling Rock? <laughs> yes. Have you fucked people giving you a coffee porter? I have not, but I would. See? So the Rolling Rock is, is even better. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's kind of my thing with this one is like, how long has it been since I've had a coffee porter? Because if it's been a while, then maybe... But um, as a standard, it's not going to hurt your chances, but it's not going to help you a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what date is this on? Um, I'm going to put this third date. Yeah. Uh, the, the least exciting of the dates. Uh, but it's not bad. That's the date where you're supposed to get laid. Well, <laughs> third or fifth. They, they wait that long now? That's what they tell you to do. I, I dated a lot, lot earlier. So uh, yes, you also dated in the eighties. Comment yes, below yes. and tell us what date you wait for. <laughs> do you uh, wait for? Do you have a date first? Is, yeah. is this a? Yeah, That's the, hookup culture. <laughs> yeah. uh, is this a lawnmower beer? No, no. It, I think it's. I think it's too heavy for that. Um, okay. It's a. It, it's a fire. It's a campfire beer. Yeah. Um, all right. Back to our regularly scheduled program. I'm trying to get my notes on the she's, beers. She, she's desperately trying to get her notes up there. So, uh, you know, uh, I Thank think you. the place we were going next is we kind of have some examples of polymaths, yeah. and we've kind of looked at their history and their personality. So is it really better to be a polymath, a, a, a jack of all trades, which should we say? Yeah. Or is it better to kind of focus and specialize and, you know, finish something? You know, yeah. I don't know. So I want to premise this a little bit um, because I think whenever we call somebody a renaissance man, um, do you envision that? Do you take that as a compliment? Yeah, I do. I, and and I think that's fairly standard. Would you say so, John? Yeah. I think. People, or they think you're really old. <sighs> Always with the jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I wonder about it because I I look at I made the joke before mm-hmm. that 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 I'm not smart. I just know a lot of stuff because uh-huh. of what I you know you know I I'm I know my history. I know my government. Mm-hmm. I know my literature. Mm-hmm pretty good in rock and roll other than that i don't know much anything uh my son can can take your carburetor apart and rebuild it you know mm-hmm. he he's smart i just know a lot uh and and i wonder about that kind of stuff mm-hmm. I, I you know uh, what what do you value more mm-hmm. um there there's a degree of that 
that practicality that I wish I had that mm-hmm. I don't have. Yeah. So that kind of general knowledge. Yeah, and I don't have that. Yeah. I, I I just don't. I wish I did. Yeah. So, and I guess what I'm getting here is um, we shortened that phrase, um, a jack of all trades and a master of none, which seems to kind of contradict our reverence for the Renaissance man. Um, but contrasting that with where society seems to be going right now in a skepticism of experts and a simultaneous expectation that when you're an expert on astrophysics, um, that you will then also be an expert on uh, government. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> Which is only true for Neil deGrasse Tyson. It's not true for Neil deGrasse Tyson, no, though. No, I, I trust Neil deGrasse Tyson on everything. You I, shouldn't. I, I, I'm just, I'm just going to ask him everything from you know now what? on. Ask him about astrophysics. Let him just fascinate you with I'm, tales of, um, of the I'm cosmos. Thinking, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, and it'd be great. I'm, I'm thinking I'd let him balance my checkbook and everything else, too. I just... Uh, I, I, but so I, I guess I want to kind of take a look at where society is going with this idea of um, simultaneously not trusting experts and expecting the few experts that we do trust to be experts in everything. Yeah, uh, I, I trust Tyson. I don't trust Bill Nye. So, you know. Why don't you trust Bill Nye? Because he's a prick. I don't like him. So is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Nah, but, but Bill Nye. He's a funny prick. That's Bill, why you don't. That's why you like NG, NDGT. Bill Nye looks like a penis. I just I don't have a thing for him at all. I have no desire. So does Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> One's a bigger penis, though. Uh, Neil deGrasse is a much more impressive penis, though. Oh, my good God. <laughs> um, any thoughts, John? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I think it's interesting. Uh, I think probably generally the specialists are more needed. Yeah. Um, except here's the problem. Because of that, we have created a society that almost exclusively trains the specialists, mm-hmm. yeah. which makes the polymaths rarer. Now, we don't need as many, but you do need somebody to come along once in a while and take all the works of mm-hmm. the, the specialization people and connect them together into a coherent piece, yeah. right? Um, but because these polymaths, there's not a polymath program you can go to school for. Um, uh, yeah, you can go, you can you go can to go college for a general, general degree. In, in, it's called a... Uh, different uh, schools call it different things. General degree is what you teach. I education. knew somebody who got one, and it was like a... Uh, uh, it's like take 120 hours of something. <laughs> yeah, but this person had a shitload of hours. They went to school for like 20 years yeah. and ended up with like a, a general studies is what they call bachelor it. General of, studies. Yeah, yeah, general arts and applied yeah. arts and sciences or yeah. some shit like but, that. But let's be Just honest. Everything. Let's be honest. Most of the time when people get that degree, it is not that they are going to school to be a, in the polymath program. Right. They are drifting around school for a while, and finally they get enough points. They say, get the fuck out of our school. <laughs> I would love to go get a degree with that. Just just, just pick the classes I want to take and take whatever you want. That would oh, be yeah. awesome. Yeah. But, but you know, we, so there's not a good training program for this right now. So I think when we see these people, we see them as a rarity within our society, mm-hmm. a, a diamond in the rough. But, now, yeah, you know, you say there's not, but... Isn't that really what our public education system is trying? It, 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 it is, is going. They're not. They're not. They're not. Uh, at least in this state, they're not aiming you because we don't have the, mm-hmm. the we don't have the fine arts school and the technology school and this like like a lot of states do. You go and you're going to take some English and some mm-hmm. history and some science. Well, and that's what's interesting is like in Europe when you go to university, um, we have two solid years of basics that you have to take yeah. in the U.S. But when you go to university, you go straight into whatever field it is that you're trying to study. Part of that is the kids that are graduating their high school are graduating with, 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 with more of the basics. Fine. Yeah. Fine. But... Um, when you're taking calculus in high school, it helps. Yeah. But the point being there... Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, but the point being there is that we seem to... Um, we seem to, at least for a longer period of kids' lives, of students' lives, um, 
B kind of taking an approach of expose them to everything. Yeah. But but no, I, I see a huge difference in what you're saying. I understand you're saying they are learning a lot of stuff, but they are learning the basics of a lot of stuff. Oh, definitely. When was the last time there was a school program in which the same person read a, a higher education paper in physics and then went a, and read a higher education paper in biology oh, I agree. And, yeah, was, yeah. and was apt enough not to write those papers but to understand both of right. them. And the, the answer is there is no good program right now that no, does that. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I don't know that our minds are equipped for that all the time. I mean, there, there are some that are, but I, I, yeah. I just don't think everybody's equipped for that. I agree. And, and I, I also will say in, in these mm-hmm. cases, there's some people's minds who aren't equipped to specialize. And and we don't need as many of the polymaths in society. Mm-hmm. We just, you just don't. You, there's only so many pieces put together. Yeah. Um, well, and I, I think Young is a good example of that. Because I think one of the things that really helped him to um, make what turned out to be significant contributions in a, a number of fields was that he did have experience in a bunch of other places. And so he was able to come at the problems that the specialists were looking at from a different perspective with different information and go, okay, if I was coming at this... Uh, equation from a physics perspective, I would probably be trying to look for these elements here and figure out what's going on here um, and and just focus on it in a different way. Um, and so I guess where I'm going is I feel like um, I feel like you're right. We don't need as many polymaths. But you need the choice. I think, well, and I I think that's kind of the interesting thing. And is it a choice? I mean, or, or if you're if you're that kind of person, are you just going to be that person? Well, and I, I do wonder because, like we saw with Da Vinci, it seemed like he was kind of gearing that way. Yeah, it, it, his whole life. It was a different period. Everybody was kind of self-educated, so you kind of but, had to aim yourself, you know. But he never aimed himself. He pointed himself at figuring shit out. Just whatever was around him, he wanted to figure it out. Yeah, whatever interested him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but everything interested him. And, and there's your key. Yeah. And, but I, I think we also have to, to be fair to all of these people. Uh, look at their background and look where they came from. They mm-hmm. came from highly privileged places in society where oh, no they doubt. could wander around and do this. It makes me wonder if it's not... If it's not more common than we think it is, mm-hmm. but a lot of the polymaths either get pushed into the mold and mm-hmm. they go to a single subject or are too poor to really, you know, get out of, of, of the basics. Oh, also. yeah. You know, times change. There, there, there was a time in, in this world when, uh, you know, the wealthy at least, when you got to be a certain age, you you did the continent. You 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 went and you and, and you experienced yeah. uh, the you world. Yeah, you had a year abroad. Yeah, and, and and we don't do that anymore for the most part. I mean, it, right. Even though even the wealthy don't tend to do that as much. Yeah. They surf YouTube. Uh, but that's got to be something different there. Yeah. How do you how do you know what's going to interest you if you don't get out and see it? Well, that was one of my big things in uh, when I graduated high school, like. I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I I was so interested in so many things that I wanted I, to blow I, shit up and kill people. And you went the right place for that. Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. They had great uniforms. <laughs> they do have sexy uniforms. But um but I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do. I didn't know what I was really interested in. I was somewhat interested in so many things, but was any of that something I wanted to dedicate my entire life to? And I didn't know, you know? Yep. yep. Yeah. So, anyway, is there, I don't know that there's an answer to be had here. Um, I already answered it. It's done. I've, I've given the answer. You, you gave the answer? I did. It was your turn this week? Okay. Yeah. It was John's turn this week. Okay. What was that answer? The answer is that they 42? are. The answer is that they are more valuable because they are more rare. Uh, and that has to do with societal structures. Yeah. But they are not inherently more needed than specialists. Okay. Right. I wish I was a polymath. Yeah. 
I'm not. You think? I, I wish. I, I just, I, I don't know. Says the man who's like, well, I know my history, and I know my government, and I know my rock and roll, and I yeah, know but, my literature. But I can't add past Tim without taking my shoes off. Let me off. ask, do you know anything about the origin of the term polymath? Because poly means more than one. But math, math is... knowledge. Okay. It, 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 it means... Uh, yeah, mathematics didn't yeah, always mean arithmetic. Yeah. That's why there was the word arithmetic. That was specific for yeah, numbering things. It literally things. means logic. That's why they, they would, in, in, in Europe, instead of saying doing math, we're doing our maths. Yeah. We're doing their yeah. logics. Okay. Yeah. So there's that. Fair enough. Yeah. See? I know lots of stuff. See? You, you polymath. I'm a polymath. <laughs> no, I'm not. You just don't like it because it has the word math in it. Uh, you think you can't be a polymath without knowing I maths. think that's true. I think that's true. Without knowing See? your maths, you can't. I told can't. you. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so. Um, interesting question. Interesting discussion, I think. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this show. What? We can't do that yet. Why not? We have not mentioned Commerce Street Draft House. We are that's sitting right. here oh, yeah. in the middle of Commerce Street Draft House. In Jacksonville, Texas. Yes. Yes. And uh, I want to say thank you. Thank you yeah, guys yeah. for this hosting us. This is a great us. place. Yeah. Good, good selection of beer. If you're in East Texas, come out here and check it out. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Great atmosphere, great people, lots of fun. There's a high probability you'll find me sitting out on the, on the porch drinking. That is true. So yeah. uh, come out and see me. Yeah. <laughs> so um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed the show, you can like, heart, share, subscribe, hit the bell if you're on YouTube because you've already subscribed. So you're going to do that extra step, too. Um, other than that, go if, buy shit. If you like this show, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash six pack philosophy. You can buy our go buy shit. You can buy swag at uh, teespring.com slash stores slash six pack philosophy. Buy shit. Stop it, Mike. They heard you. <laughs> um, <Buy> uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> other than that, we've had fun and we hope you have too. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 